next one is integration and unification of polarities, how to become a whole self. And you can think of yourself as a planet Earth, okay? And that we have to own all the continents on the planet and say, this too is me, this too is me. And it's unification of polarities, all the different aspects, so that we won't become either or, but both, and own all different aspects of the self. And the polarities are what we gain from our mother, what we gain from our father, the polarities of the hemispheres, left hemisphere, right hemisphere, the polarity of our sensory stuff and our motive stuff, the polarity of organs that take in things, that put out things, and the polarity of maleness and femaleness, that we are born of a single gender, but we have male aspects and female aspects, okay? The third task is development of consciousness, and that's a biggie. Not only to be, but to be aware of being, okay? Not only to feel, but to know that we exist and what feeling is about, and get a sense of meaning of existence. That has to do with the development of consciousness. And the biggest element in the development of consciousness for humans is the development of language. Am I speaking loud enough? Yeah. The development of language. And before I talk about the development of language, I want to talk about the sensory motor system of how we apprehend reality, okay? Do you know what I mean by that? How we apprehend reality. We see, and we're made to be able to survive in an imperfect world, so that we, are, we have a kind of a uh, selective attention to see what's good for us, and move toward it, and see what's bad for us and move away. So at the very instant of seeing, we're going to get a motor response to do something with that that is going to enhance our life. Okay, you follow that? I call that see, do. That every moment there's a perception, there's a motor response to that perception. That we make, our body is prepared to engage, because when I see this, I have all the action to do that with it. If I see this, all the buttons, my fingers are ready to do that. If I see this, I'm going to close my hand in the exact same place. So every instant of seeing is going to get a motor response. But when a child first sees, they're new at that game. They see something, and then they do something. And then they're going to remember what they saw was either good or bad, and they're going to make a memory of what they saw. So the next time they see, they're not only going to see what's out there, they're going to remember the database of what they saw before. And that's part of learning. So that we begin to accumulate, in order to be able to be effective in the world, a huge database of what we've seen before, so that we don't make the same mistakes over. So we have what's called the real eye and the mind's eye. Okay, the mind's eye is the database of what we've seen before. And we also have a motor system that remembers all the different actions and we begin to get more and more articulated as we repeat. So we have not only the real body, but we have in our brain, and you know all about that, we have motor neurons that are firing without our body firing, okay? And then we can do what we did before in our mind. You follow? So we have a mind's eye to see what we saw before. We have a mind's body to do what we did before. And let's practice that for a moment, okay? Let's see in your mind's eye your mother. What happens? Did you see your mother in your mind's eye? And if you and you did you notice that your face reacted and your body reacted and maybe your heartbeat reacted and if you like, you say, Mom. If you don't like, you say, Mom. So the moment you saw, even in your mind's eye, you got a motor response, especially on your face, right? That means you can see what you saw before, and you were going to react to it, even though it isn't in front of you, OK, in your mind's eye. And now ride a bicycle in your mind. 
are you doing? And if you were in an MRI, the neurons would be firing exactly like you, and you can do that. Now, here's the interesting part. We can see what we saw before, we can do what we did before. See what we saw before in our mind's eye, do what we did before in our mind's body. But it's also very creative, that part of the brain, because that part of the brain can make us see what we never saw before and do what we never did before in imagination. We have a nation of images that we can invent in our brain. There's a very constructive, creative part of our brain that can see what we never saw before and do what we never did before. And do you know when that happens? After a structure. <laughs> wait a moment, wait a moment, I gotta hear you. It happens... After a structure. <laughs> In okay, dreams. that's true. I was going to say dreams. Whoa, there we go. No, but when, when it's happening most regularly is in our dreams, okay? In our dreams. We're seeing, I mean, we're all surprised, I had a dream, oh my God, you know. We're seeing what we never saw before, we're doing what we never, and we're watching a movie that we are the star of at the same time, only who the heck is the videographer if we're just the shocked audience, okay? That means our brain can make movies without us deciding on them, and we are gonna to react to them. I want you to think about that. There's a part of our brain that will make what we've never seen before, and we're the audience of it, and never did before, and we're the doer of it in the dream. That's going to be very important as we go along and look at this stuff. Now.